Tropical disturbance reaching the coast of India on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 22nd. Well, it's still a very similar picture to what we've been seeing in the last few days with Invest 94S, still without a proper designation, but still, according to our analysis, classified as a tropical depression. It did at one point reach tropical storm status, so that notches up number 89 of the year so far. On day 175 of Atlantic hurricane season, there are still no areas of interest, and is there any sign of late activity? Well, those signals that we saw on the models last time have faded a little bit, in fact completely to be honest, so it doesn't look like it anytime soon. In the eastern Pacific it's day 192 and hope is even lower for any late systems here if that's what you want to call it. No areas of interest in the next five days and nothing expected uh, to even become a system in that time. In the western Pacific we've got a 10% still along the coast of Vietnam and 60% chance for the area of interest that's still in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, it's like nothing's really happened in the last two days. They've just moved a little bit further west, both of these systems, without a change in their percentages. And in the Southern Hemisphere, Tropical Depression 94S, located now well to the southeast of Java, um, and is slowly trekking a little bit further southwards, gaining a few more uh, degrees of latitude, slowly headed towards Australia, will be gone fairly soon. Satellite imagery across the Atlantic Ocean looks like this right now and you can see a big uh, V-shape almost of a front um, that's really tugging along any tropical moisture from the Western Caribbean and that's what will make things really difficult for systems trying to form over there and makes uh, any storm tracks that do form quite unpredictable. Looking towards the Eastern Pacific it's also looking fairly uh, drab right now. A lot of convection over Central America, but apart from that, really not too much going on over there in the Eastern Pacific. It's looking pretty calm. Over to the Western Pacific, and you'll see that there's one or two little disturbances that are brewing. Uh, interestingly, one of those has been marked Invest 98W, uh, not far from Palau, but there's really very little going on there. I'm not sure why they've actually done that. Uh, but that little uh, low pressure, um, only a couple of uh, millibars deviating from the atmospheric pressure, will be heading in towards the Philippines. In the Indian Ocean you can see that system just off the coast of uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, with the uh, band, uh, the convection reaching just about as far as Chennai to the south, uh, possibly delivering heavy rainfall along the coast. And in the Australian region, you might still be able to make out that depression with some rotation. It had convection earlier, then it lost it, and now it's starting to regain it again. And very uh, disturbed weather now across the whole northern part of Australia, which is partly influenced by that system, particularly in the Northern Territory. Well, let's take a look at current sea surface temperatures, and they're still warm in the Eastern Pacific, we always say. Uh, but it's the conditions that are really the problem now. 30 degrees in one or two tiny spots there. The Atlantic the loop current looks to be weakening a little bit. The Gulf Stream 2 looks like it's breaking up past the outer banks of North Carolina now a little bit. Uh, but generally in the lower latitudes where we might see any late development, Caribbean Sea still looking good, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius. Looking towards the Eastern Hemisphere then, the Indian Ocean, if we're seeing any possible systems there. Where that current system is, it's around 28 degrees Celsius, but cooling a little bit on the Indian coast. And where that tropical depression is right now, it's pushing 30 degrees Celsius actually, so it's pretty decent. And in the Western Pacific, good temperatures as well across the Philippine Sea and out over to the eastern part of the West Pacific at low latitudes. It is still ripe for any late developments. So we'll have to see what happens there. Going to the sea surface temperature anomalies, it's still quite a bit above average in the Western Pacific. Eastern Pacific generally below average with no signs of the La Nina abating. And in the Atlantic we're still looking at well above average in the subtropical zones. A little bit less so in the actual deep tropics but still slightly above which might make all the difference if we might see a late season storm. 
Oceanic heat content is still hanging on in the Western Caribbean and around Jamaica and Haiti, but elsewhere it's really tailing off and cooling down in the Atlantic now. The Eastern Pacific, there was hardly anything there to begin with, even at peak season, but there's still a little, one or two little spots. And in the Western Pacific, there's uh, a real line from Guam basically to the northern part of the Philippines, the Picola region of southern Luzon. Well, let's check the computer models, and this is out to five days on the GFS, and it may surprise you to see that the GFS is now throwing up a tropical cyclone near the Micronesian Islands, in fact, over the Micronesian Islands there, and by day five becomes a typhoon. Look at that rapid intensification right at the end there, getting all the way to category two status, it would seem, at the end of that five-day period. Now, we haven't marked it on our charts because no other model has picked up on this yet, but we will watch it very closely we might see percentages posted tomorrow in the indian ocean you can see that system moving inland over india very weak you may have just seen that western pacific one as well making landfall in vietnam very shortly and then a later system there just off myanmar uh, towards the end of that five day period another weak system maybe a depression that's just lingering off the coast there on the western coast heading up uh, towards the north might be another brief chance of a tropical cyclone Obviously, we haven't marked that one either. And check out the precipitation markers then for this area of Micronesia. You might be able to see a little round island there. That's Pompeii in the uh, eastern part of uh, the Micronesian islands. And on the western side, you might see the island of Chuk. I'm not sure if you'll see it there, but we'll be marking it with indicators. So the first indicator there, that is on Pompeii, 8 inches there. And the other one there, that's 10 inches in Chuk. are two um, regional centers uh, in this very uh, isolated part of the world of course 10 inches there that's 250 millimeters and at points in between on some of the smaller atolls we could be looking at maybe 16 inches that's 400 millimeters still speculative at this time but even if it doesn't become a tropical cyclone we might see some tropical wave move through there with potential maybe Check the longer range though, what happens to that typhoon? Well it only gets stronger as we look at day 5 through 10 and look at how much of a beast it becomes when it enters the Philippine Sea and it's headed right up there towards the west-northwest towards the northern part of the Philippines. It would seem an unlikely scenario to me that you'd be having a storm making landfall up there um, in early December, bearing in mind that it is depicted there as a Category 4 no less, a strong Category 4 there. Uh, it just seems unlikely, but we'll have to keep watching it closely of course. Anyways, uh, you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have all of our usual items on offer as well as our full season and individual animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt also still available. That's a sign that the serious stuff is done with and this is what the silly range has on offer right now. This is day 10 to 16 look at that a potential tropical cyclone moving up the west coast of Mexico and then an actual tropical cyclone down there in the 5th of December no less in the eastern Pacific and becomes a hurricane as it moves off towards the west and then turns northwest what is this September October no this is the first days of December there really shouldn't be anything like this happening in the eastern Pacific at that time of year it's a very regimented basin with uh, clearly defined start and end points more than there is in the Atlantic that's just mad and this is what happens that major typhoon category 3 landfall there looks like in uh, probably Isabella province in Luzon and then it maintains typhoon status for a bit and then shrivels up and shrinks down towards the southwest near Vietnam once again I must challenge um, fairly vehemently the um, favorability of this actually happening whether it would move that far north and if it did whether it would still be that strong I would uh, suggest the answer would be no but uh, who knows where the edges of uh, our climatological norms are these days let's take a look at the Australian region you can see this potential tropical cyclone there in the silly range as well and you can see it spinning around there and giving Darwin a little bit of a scare there as it reaches category 1, maybe category 2 status just as it reaches the coast. It ends up staying just south of Darwin and then moves inland and then down towards the southeast. But it does uh, swivel around quite a bit there and there must be weak steering as there tends to be in that particular zone.
fascinating but that is on the super long range well guess what we're only a week now until hurricane week it's less than that now it's monday monday coming up the 28th of november uh, that is when we're going to be unleashing all kinds of fun and action and educational documentary features it's going to have the lot this year the whole week from november 28th and on this day, on November 22nd, 1969, we had Hurricane Martha, another turn up for the books in the Atlantic Ocean in what was quite a serious season that year, uh, ended up making landfall in Panama. And we had an unnamed tropical storm that was drifting towards the southwest in the South China Sea. Just want to add on about the uh, hurricane week there. Uh, we, we, are, we currently have applications open for the game shows. Uh, check our community tab for a link there. And that closes at 0 UTC on November 24th. Well then, in the Atlantic Ocean, the next name on our naming list, should we get one more, it will be Owen. In the Eastern Pacific, could it be Seymour reaching Category 1 status in December? That's what the GFS thinks. And in the Central Pacific, the next name is still Hone. In the Western Pacific, our next name, that potentially big name, will be Pakar. And in the North Indian Ocean, our next name is still Mandus, as it looks like the current system is not going to get its wings. And in the Southern Hemisphere down in Australia, the next name is Darien. The Southwest Indian Ocean will see Chaniso. And in the South Pacific, next up is Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>